summer night, some great man, for he scorns to travel with other people. What, fellow? A public house and a bed where all the people sleep. Uh, sir, I am the bed at the same <coughs> Family of that, thank you. Uh, oh, but the squire himself, sir, he's in the land. What company have you? There's Mr. Gage, the excise man, the hunch the black barber, and two or three other gentlemen. I see my sister's letter gave a true picture of her spouse. Uh, oh, the sir, puppies here's... left me asleep, sir. Sir, here's the squire. Well, sir. Sir, I am an unfortunate man. I have £3,000 a year, and I can't get a man to drink a cup of ale with me. That's very harsh. Aye, sir, and unless you have pity upon me, I want to smoke a pipe with me. I mustn't go home to my wife. I'd rather go to the devil by half. <laughs> but you won't see your wife tonight. I suppose she'll be going to bed, and you don't suppose to lie with her in that pickle. What? I'm not lying with my wife in this pickle, sir. What do you take me for? An atheist? Or a rake. I think if you hate your wife, you should not throw her. Well, I think so too, friend. But I'm justice of peace, and I must do nothing against the law. <laughs> the law, as I take it, Mr. Justice. Nobody observes the law for law's sake. Only for the good by whom it's made. But if you commit a crime, you must lie there, my friend. Unless I'm guilty and I deserve it. Can you play at whisk, sir? Uh, no, certainly not, sir. Mortal force? Neither. Burn me, sir. Where was this man bred? I can't go home to it but two o'clock. Well, for half an hour, if you <coughs> please. But you must consider this means. Late? That is the reason I can't go to bed. Come, sir. spouse yet? No, I'm condemned to be alone till towards four. Then perhaps I may be executed with his company. Well, sister, I'll leave you to your rest. I suppose you'll go straight to bed? I don't know what to do. hi -ho. That was a very desiring sigh, sister. This is a languishing hour, <clears throat> sister. And may prove a critical minute if the pretty fellow were here. What? Here? In my bedchamber at two o'clock in the morning? The family asleep, my hated husband abroad, and my lovely fellow at my feet. Oh, God, sister. Thoughts are free, sister, and then I allow you. Good night. Good night, Dorinda. Thoughts free. Are they so? Why then? Suppose him here, <laughs> dressed like a youthful, gay, and burning bridegroom, with tongue enchanted. Eyes bewitching and knees adoring. Ah! <laughs> Have my thoughts raised a spirit? What are you, sir? A man or a devil? A man, madam, a man. How shall I be sure of it? Madam, I will give you a demonstration this minute. <laughs> <laughs> do you intend to be rude? Yes, madam, if you please. <clears throat> In the name of wonder, what's came you? From the skies, madam, I'm Jupiter in love, and you shall be my Alcmena. <laughs> From the window, madam, your cousin Cupid lent me his wings and your sister Venus opened the casement. It's time to drop down with wonder. And I with admiration. What will become of me? How beautiful she looks. Lilies unfold their white, their fragrant charm, when the warm sun thus dart into their arms. Raise the house. <clears throat> I'll wake the dead before I bear this. Approach me with the freedom of a keeper. I'm glad on it. Your impudence has cured me. Madam, if this be impudence, I leave your partial self no panting pilgrim after a tedious, painful voyage ever bowed before his saint with more devotion. Now I'm lost if he kneels. Rise, thou prostrate engineer. Not all thy undermeaning skill shall reach my heart. Rise, and know that I am a woman without my sex. 
I can love to all the tenderness of sighs, wishes, and tears, but go no further. Still, to convince you that I'm more than woman, I can speak my frailty, confess my weakness even for you. For me? Hold, sir. <laughs> Build not upon that, for if you disobey what I command you now, my most mortal hatred follows. Leave me this minute. If he denies me, I'm lost. Then you'll promise. Anything another time. When shall I come? Tomorrow, when you will. Your lips must seal the promise. <laughs> oh, raptures in paradise! <laughs> and uh, why not now, my angel? The, the time, the place, silence and secrecy all conspire, and the now conscious stars are preordained this moment for my happiness. He will not, cannot, sure. And if the sun rides and disappoints not mortals of tomorrow's dawn, then this night will crown my joys. My sex's pride assists me. <clears throat> My sexy strength helps me. You should kill me first. Then I will die with you. Thieves! Thieves! Murder! Thieves! 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 Murder! Popery! <laughs> A very timorous stag will kill in rutting time. <laughs> Pray, sir! Spare what I have and take my life! What is the matter with the fellow? Oh, it's madam down in the knees of marrow bones. He's one of them. Of whom? Of what are the roads? Begging your pardon. One of the... Honest gentleman that just now broke into the house. How? I hope he did not come to rob me. Indeed I did, madam, but I would have taken nothing but what your ladyship might have spared. But <laughs> your crying thieves has waked this sleeping fool, and so he takes them for granted. Granted! <laughs> Tis granted, sir! Take all we have! That looks if we broke out of bed. Who's <laughs> madam that broke into the house with fire and sword? What? I saw him. Heard him! <laughs> I'll be here this minute. What, thieves? Oh, well, under favour, sir, I should think so. What shall we do, sir? Madam, I wish your ladyship good night. Will you leave me? Leave you? Lord, madam, had you not commanded me to be gone just now, upon pain of your immortal hatred? Hey, but pray, sir. <laughs> now comes my turn to be ravished. Listen, madam, you must use men in one way or another. Now take this by the way, madam, that none but a fool would offer you the benefit of his courage unless you take his love along with it. How are they armed, friend? Uh, with sword and pistol, sir. Shh! <laughs> Seen a lantern coming through the gallery this minute. Madam, rest assured, I'll protect you or lose my life. Your life? No, they can rob me of nothing. I value half so much. Therefore, let me entreat you to be gone. No, madam. I'll consult my own safety for the sake of yours. I'll work by stratagem. Do you think you have the courage enough to face the appearance of him? Yes, yes. Since I escaped your hands, I can face anything. <laughs> Come hither, Brother Scrub, don't you recognize me? Uh, <gasps> oh, my dear brother! <laughs> this way! Here. Aye, <laughs> aye, oh, this is the chamber. And the lady alone. <clears throat> Who are you, sir? What would you have? Do you come to rob me? Rob you? A lack of day, man. I'm only a younger brother, madam. And so, madam, if you make a noise, I'll shoot you through the head. Don't be afraid, madam. Those rings, madam. Don't be frightened, madam. I have a profound respect for you, madam. Your keys, madam. Don't be frightened, madam. I'm the most of a gentleman. This necklace, madam. I was never rude to any lady. I have a veneration for this necklace. Hold, profane villain, and take the rewards of thy sacrilege. Oh, sir, don't kill me. <coughs> How many of there is in scrub? Uh, five and forty, sir. Then I must kill the villain to have him out of the way. Wait, wait, we are but free, sir, upon my word. Scrub, will you undertake to secure him? Uh, not I, sir. Uh, kill him, kill him. <laughs> Run to Gypsy's chamber. There you'll find the doctor. Bring him hither presently. Come, Rogue, if you have a short prayer, say it. Sir, I have no prayer. The government provides us with a chaplain to say prayers on such occasions. Pray, sir, don't kill him. You frighten me as much as him. The dog shall die, madam, for being the occasion of my disappointment. Sirrah, this moment is your last. Wait, wait. I can give you 200 pounds to save my life. Have you no more, rascal? Uh, I can command 400, but 
I save the other two to spare my life on such occasions. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Scrub, I take it you and the doctor between you can manage him. Lay hold of him, doctor. You are turned over to the priest already. Doctor, I thank you, but you come before your time. I ain't condemned yet. Come, come, my dear joy. I will secure your body and your soul and give you an absolution. An absolution? Can you procure me a pardon? No, no, sir. Then you and your absolution to the devil. Convey him to the cellar, there bind him. Take the pistol, and if the officer is this, shoot him through the head. And then hurry back to us with all the speed you can. Come, my dear joy. But how came the doctor? In short, madam. Death, the other ladies, the, rogue, the other rogues are at work with them. I must fly to their assistance. Will you come with me or venture yourself here? Oh, with you, dear sir, with you. Your keys, I'll oh. get you, then. Turn this way, villains! Oh. I just engage an army in such a cause. Oh, oh Hannah, but I saw it to help this brave man. Oh, there are three or four hanging the whole way. Oh, <coughs> oh. Hold, hold, my lord, every man is bird prey. Oh. 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 No, no, we'll bind them. Uh, Here, madam, let me invite them. There isn't this fellow who fights, loves and banters all in a breath. Ah, you've got the rose brought with you, I suppose. Ah, the rogue's destiny, a rogue dying himself. Mm. Come, my lord. <coughs> this was a scandalous sort of an office if our adventure should end in this hangman work. But I hope there is something in prospect that... Ah, oh, Scrum, have you secured your tartar? Yes, sir. I left the priest in him uh, disputing about religion. Pray, sir, carry this gentleman to reap the benefit of this controversy. Ah. <clears throat> How came my lord here? How came the gentleman here? I'll tell you the greatest piece of villainy. <laughs> I fancy, Archer, you've been more successful in your oh, adventures than the housebreakers. No matter for my adventures, yours is the principal. Just press her to marry you this minute. Now, while her spirits are at high blood, you should throw yourself at her knees, speak some romantic nonsense or other. The priest is now in the cellar and dare not refuse to do the work. But how shall I get off without being observed? You, a lover, and not know how to get off? Mm. <laughs> oh, let me see. You, you bleed, aren't you? Death. I'm oh, glad on it. This will do the business. I'll amuse the old lady and Mrs. Sullen about dressing my wound while you carry off Dorinda. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, um, how would you be gratified for your services? <laughs> come, come, madam. There's no time for compliments. I, I'm wounded, madam. Oh, how rude. Oh, I hope, sir, that you have received no hurt. Oh, none but what you may cure. Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh, let me see your arm. This is but an ugly gash. I'll have some powder sugar to stop the blood. Oh, but you should go to bed. Why, madam, a bed would do very well. <laughs> madam, will you do me the favour to conduct me to a chamber? Oh. Do, daughter, do. Well, I'll get the probe to plaster in the lint ready. Oh. <laughs> Come on, madam, why don't you obey your mother's commands? How can you, after what has <coughs> passed, have the confidence to ask me? I'm a soldier of fortune. I must be paid. Tis ungenerous in you, sir, to upbraid me with your services. Tis ungenerous in you, madam, not to reward him. How? At the expense of my honour. Honour? Can honour consist with ingratitude? If you deal like a woman of honour, then do like a man of honour. Do you think I would deny you in such a case? <laughs> uh, madam, your brother awaits you below. My brother? Heaven be praised. Sir, he will thank you for your services. He has it in his power. Who is your brother, madam? Sir Charles Freeman. Excuse me, I must go and receive him. Sir Charles Freeman? It's death and hell, my old acquaintance. 
Now, unless Aimwell has made good use of his time, all our fair machine will go south into the sea like the Eddystone. will, I hope, plead for my easy yielding. Though I must own, you, your lordship, had a friend in the fort before. The sweets of high blood will dwell upon my tongue. Here, doctor. Are you ready, Bob? I'm ready. Uh, just one moment. Um, my lord, a word. I have a frightful example of a hasty marriage in my own family, and when I reflect upon it, it shocks me. Therefore, consider... Consider? Do you doubt my honour or my love? Neither, neither. I do believe you equally just as brave. And were the whole of your sex drawn out form to choose, I would not cast a look upon the multitude if you were absent. But, my lord, I am a woman. <laughs> Colours, concealments may hide a thousand faults in me. Therefore, know me better first. I hardly affirm that I should know myself in anything except my love. Such goodness who can endure? I find myself unequal to the task of villain. She has gained my soul and made it honest like her own. I cannot, cannot hurt her. Doctor, retire. <laughs> Madam, behold your lover and your proselyte, and judge of my passion by my conversion. Oh, I'm all a lie, I'm all a counterfeit, except my passion. <laughs> Forbid it. Heaven, a counterfeit! I'm no lord, but a poor needy man, come with a mean, a thunderous design, to prey upon your fortunes, but the beauties of your mind and person have so won me from myself, that, like a trusty servant, I prefer the interests of my mistress to my own. Oh, sure, I have had a, a, a dream of some poor mariner, a sleepy image of, of a welcome port, and a wake involved in storms. A praester, who are you? Brother to the man's title I usurped, but stranger to his honour or his fortune. Matchless honesty. <laughs> oh, once, sir, I was proud of your wealth and title, but now I am prouder that you want it all. This proves that there was no aim but love, and that it was justly levelled. Uh, doctor, come in! Oh. Oh, in uh, you pardon, sir. We shan't need you any more. Uh, excuse me, Lord. Uh, I'll wait on you presently. Oh, my son. This, this is foolish! Gone! And bid the priest depart! It has an ominous look. Courage, Tom. Shall I wish you joy? No, I have discovered myself. Discovered? Without my consent? What have I embarked the same small remains in the same bottom with yours, and you dispose of all without my partnership? Oh, Archer, I own my faults. After conviction, tis too late for pardon. You may well remember, Mr. Aimwell, that you proposed this folly. As you begun, so ended. Henceforth, I'll hunt my fortune single. Stay, my dear Roger, but a minute. Stay? What, to be despised, exposed, and laughed at? No, I would sooner change conditions with the worst of the rogues we just now found than bear one scornful smile from the proud knight that I once treated as my equal. In what knight? Sir Charles Freeman, brother to the woman I nearly. But enough of that. Tis a cursed night's work, and I leave you to make the best on it. Freeman, one word, Archer. I do still hopes she receives my confession with pleasure. Steph, who doubts it? She consented after to the match. I do still hopes she will be just. To herself, I warrant her, as you should have been. A and here she comes, and smiling she comes. Oh, oh my lord, I fly into your arms of impatience. Every minute in your absence has been a tedious hour. Where's his priest? Und, a brave girl. I assume this gentleman is a to my affairs. Yes, yes, I am to be your father. <coughs> but come, priest, to do your office. Make haste, make haste, couple them anyway. Madam, I am to give you... My mind's altered. Eh? Wait. I'm confounded. Come ashore and show myself. 
What's the matter now, madam? This gentleman's honesty has proven that he should hide nothing from me, and my justice proves me to conceal nothing from him. Therefore, you are the man you thought you counterfeited. You are the true Lord Viscount Ainwell, and I wish your lordship joy. If you consent to the match, then I would rather marry you in the face of the world. What, what does she mean? mean? Oh, here's a witness for my truth. I wish you joy, Lord Ainwell. Of what? Of your honour and your estate. Your brother passed away a day before I left London, and your friends to writ after you to Brussels, and uh, for the rest of myself, I took the honour. Parky, sir, now don't you banter now. That's the truth, upon my honour. Thanks to the pregnant stars that formed this accident, and thanks to the womb of time that brought it forth, away with it. Thanks to the guardian angel that led me to the prize. <laughs> uh, my lord, don't you remember something of a previous agreement which entitles me to moiety of this good lady's fortune, which I think would amount to five thousand pounds? Not a penny, Archer. You would have cut my throat just now because I would not deceive this lady. Aye, and I will cut it again if you should deceive her now. As I expected. To end this dispute, the lady's fortune is ten thousand pounds. What if I stakes? Take the lady or the ten thousand pounds. How is your lordship so indifferent? No, 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 madam. My lordship knows very well that I'll take the money and I give you to my lord, so we're both provided for. No, uh, who wants him? I have a box and a letter for him. What's this? The guardamain. By this light, my lord, our money again. But this will unfold the riddle. Hmm. Ah, oh, tis for the public's good and must be communicated to the company. Mr. Martin, my father, being afraid of an impeachment by the rogues that are taken tonight, is gone off. But if you can procure him a pardon, he'll make great discoveries that may be useful to the country. Could I have met you instead of your master tonight, I would have delivered myself into your hands with a sum that much exceeds that in your strong box, which I have sent to you, with an assurance to my dear Martin that I shall ever be his most faithful friend till death, Cherry. Now there's a bill I do for you. <laughs> As for the father, I encourage him. And for the daughter, uh, pray, my lord, have your bride taken into the services instead of gypsy? I can assure you, madam, your deliverance was owing to her discovery. Your command, my lord, without obligation, I will take care of her. Oh, this good company meet opportunely in a design I have for my unfortunate sister. I intend to part her from her husband. Gentlemen, will you assist me? It's death, who would not? What's all this? They tell me, spouse, that you have been robbed? Truly, spouse, I was pretty near it, had not these two gentlemen interposed. How came these gentlemen here? That's his way of returning thanks, you must know. <laughs> Sir, you promised me last night that you would deliver your what lady to me. Ha! <laughs> huh. What do you mean by her? Huh? <laughs> sir, you will deliver her. In short, sir, we have saved you and your family. And if you are not civil, we'll unbind the rogues, join them, and set fire to your house. What does he mean, not part with his Old wife? Old gentlemen, all things here must move by consent. Let my dear and I talk the matter over, and you may judge it between us. Well, let me know first how to be our judges. Pray, sir, who are you? I am Sir Charles Freeman, and I'm come to take away your wife. Hmm. And you good, sir? Thomas Viscount Aimwell. Come to take away your sister. And you, good sir? Francis Archer, Esquire. Come to take away well, my mother, I hope. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are heartily welcome. I have never met with three more obliging men since the day I was born. And now, wife, you may have the first word. <laughs> and the last for five pounds. Spouse. Rib. How long have we been married? By the old monk, 14 months. But by my account, 14 years. <laughs> Deserve out by my reckoning. Pray, spouse, what did you marry for? To get an heir to my estate. And have you succeeded? No. The condition fails his side. Pray, madam, what did you marry for? 
to support the weaknesses of my sex by the strength of his, and to enjoy the pleasures of an agreeable society. And are your expectations being met? No. So, what are the bars of your mutual contempt? In the first place, I can't drink ale with him. Nor can I drink tea with her. I can't hunt with you. I can't dance with you. I hate cocking and racing. I abhor ombre and picket. Your silence is intolerable. Your pratting is worse. Have we not been a perpetual offence to each other? A gnawing vulture at the heart? A frightful goblin to the sight. A porcupine to the feeling? A perpetual wormwood to the taste? Is there on earth a thing we can agree on? Yes, to part. With all my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Your hand? Here. These hands joined us, and these shall part us away. North. South. East. West. Far as the poles asunder. Then rest us her fortune. Sir Charles, you love your sister, and I love her fortune. Everyone to their fancy. This no, then you won't refund. Not a stiver. <laughs> this night has proved strangely lucky to us all, for Captain Gibbet, in his walk, had made bold Mr. Sullen with your study and escritoire, and had taken out all the writings of her, your estate. All the articles of marriage to this lady, bills, bonds, leases and receipts, to an infinite value, and I took them off him, and I give them to Sir Charles. Gentlemen, you may have that fortune, but Sir Charles, if you have a mind, you may celebrate my sister's divorce, you may celebrate my divorce and my sister's wedding. Scrub! Bring me a tram. Madam, there's a country dance to the trifle that I sung today. Oh. Your hand and we'll lead it up. Free. 